Hi everyone, welcome to today's video on finding your niche in cybersecurity. Now, cybersecurity can be a very complicated and large field with lots of things going on. You have incident response, security architecture, security engineering, to all kinds of things. And finding out what area or category truly resonates with you can be a challenging task. Whether you're a beginner or someone who has been in one particular area for a long time, often it's hard to come across what goes on in other fields and to know whether you would be a good fit in that or not. In today's video, we're going to share some strategies that can help you explore different areas in cybersecurity in a meaningful way and figure out whether that's something you want to be working in the long term or not. Now, as a quick background, my name is Kaif. I work as a product security engineer at Atlassian, and I've been someone who does not come from a cybersecurity background. I studied computer science in my uni, and there wasn't any cybersecurity su subjects. It's something I've learned truly um, by myself. So there has been a lot of exploration and tinkering, and uh, in that phase, I figured out some things that really helped me uh, find out what I really liked and some things that wasn't. So today, I would like to share some of the things I did that really helped me figure out what area or niche of cybersecurity I belong to. Let's get started. Now, the way I'm listing them is the amount of value they have provided me personally to figure out the niche. However, it might not be the same for you. That being said, I'll just try to explain why I think this is a valuable um, approach in figuring out what area of cybersecurity you like and what value it can provide you. Let's get started. First up, we have podcasts. Now, I absolutely love podcasts because they're a very quick and easy way to not only know about some industry topic or concept, but also to sort of wet your feet into that new area you've been wondering about. For example, um, I wasn't aware of the whole cloud security or DevSecOps domain at all. And not when I came across this cloud security podcast, I was like, hmm, this seems quite interesting. This seems something I might enjoy. So I uh, gave a few um, episodes ago. And the more I listened to it, I, the more I knew about different topics of cloud security podcast, different challenges that the industry is facing, and whether I would like to be the one in tackling and solving those challenges on, on, or not. And one of the big benefits of podcasts is various industry leaders actually come onto the platform with experienced um, hosts, and they share their their thoughts and opinions and these are very very valuable resources we wouldn't especially as students or someone who is just into the industry we wouldn't have this access to these brilliant minds otherwise so knowing what they have to say can really um, give us a lot of information about one particular field and help us decide whether this is something we want to pursue or not number two we have in-person meetups and different events. Now, the reason I'm putting an emphasis on in-person is virtual meetups are great. They add a lot of value, but not, not the kind of value that helped me decide my niche or area I'm interested in. And when I go to in-person meetups, you're um, Eventually killing two birds with one stone, the first being you're getting to know a particular area of cybersecurity or even an industry quite in depth. Now, different industries like cybersecurity, data science, software engineering have their own data, own meetups and events, and you can show up in these events and get to know about them. Furthermore, within cybersecurity itself, you have various different niche meetups, which you can go and sort of explore this. Conferences might be something you need to invest a bit more. Meetups are very lightweight and you get much more value out of that um, in a quick span of time. The second big benefit of meetups is actually the networking you're doing. 
Um, like any other industry, networking is super important in cybersecurity and being able to do it effectively as well as knowing different areas and learning is a big plus. And a lot of the times the people I've met in different meetups would reach out with different opportunities in cybersecurity and they would lead to different getting more experiences in general. So um, all in all, I highly recommend meetups and for that I, I personally use the meetup app as well as I keep a lookout in Facebook events and other places um, to see whether something interesting is going on or not. Number three is very similar in tangent of the second one is LinkedIn and reaching out to people in LinkedIn. One thing I started doing a lot uh, to know the industry a bit more is um, I would message people who work in the roles I'm interested in to know about what kind of um, challenges they're facing, what are, what, what are their day-to-day -day, uh, work looks, look like, and all that stuff. Um, I was personally very interested in security engineering or security architecture. So I would Google security engineering in LinkedIn and go to the people section. And in that people section, then I would um, browse different people and shoot them a message that, hey, um, I'm someone new or I'm a student wanting to get started in the industry. I'm particularly interested in the XYZ role and from your profile, you seem to be working in this field for some amount of years. And I would love to get your thoughts on how the role is how, and if you have any general advice to share. So these kind of conversations not only gave me an idea of what, uh, what these roles might look like and whether I would enjoy or not, but also it has an element of networking and growing your connections. Number four, this is a bit more invested approach, but trying those things hands-on. Now, now, cybersecurity is one of those uh, industries where there's no shortage of uh, contents and good education, uh, educational platforms. You want to know security engineering or AppSec? Try HackMe. You have pen for Pentus and Red Teamers, Hack the Box. Uh, for Blue Team and SOX, um, Blue Team Labs, much more places where they will give you a gamified experience and these platforms can let you know what are the skills required for the particular field or area you're trying to get into as well as they're arming you with knowledge that you that can potentially is going to help you get into the field eventually right i mean you need skills to be able to work in a certain role and, and the Contrary to what your gut feeling might uh, might be saying that, hey, I need to be investing lots of time and do lots in hours. But the fact is a lot of these labs, especially when you're starting out, can really help you figure out, okay, whether this is something you're interested in or not. For example, um, malware reverse engineering or malware research is something I was looking at at the very start. So I looked at a few educative platforms, they were very good, but soon I realized that maybe reverse engineering and malware research is not necessarily my cup of tea and I wanted to do something different. And this realization wouldn't have happened if I didn't try out that particular um, educative platform. And that's why I highly recommend getting your hands dirty and figuring out early on whether you'd like something or not by checking out different educative resources. Number five, the last one, is internships and different entry-level positions. I know what you're thinking. Um, unfortunately, in cybersecurity still, entry-level roles and internships are a golden goose. They're not very easy to come across and often there's a lot of competition for them. And you might not want to be too inclined to sort of use them as a, something expendable um, to figure out whether you just like uh, that area or not, right? And a lot of people I know have the mentality of taking any internship they can get in the cybersecurity to add on to their experiences. Now, obviously, there's nothing wrong with that, but one thing to realize that in internships, the main purpose of internships is for the students to figure out whether one, they like the particular role or industry or not, and two, whether they like the company or not. 
A lot of people I know have actively done internships in multiple different fields or multiple different areas of cybersecurity and that has really helped them solidify whether they like a particular area or they, whether they want to explore something more or new. So when it comes to internships and figuring out or exploring different jobs, don't be shying, uh, don't, don't shy away from that job that you, you don't necessarily have lots of experience with. Take your chances with it. If you love cybersecurity in general, you're proactive and you can show that you're passionate through your different activities. Uh, most companies would be willing, most good companies would be willing to give you a shot and that would be really, really beneficial for you to sort of figure out whether you like it or not. So that concludes our video. I uh, hope you got some value out of it and let me know in the comments if you have any other tips or strategies in figuring out um, your niche in cybersecurity or out of the five uh, strategies we talked about, which one you uh, like the most. I'm more than willing to know that. Uh, that's all for today. All the best with your cybersecurity journey. If there's any questions or comments or thoughts, feel free to reach out to me um, here in the comment section or to me in LinkedIn. I'm always trying my best to get back to you as soon as possible. Thanks everyone for listening. Enjoy the rest of your day. Cheers.